Good afternoon, everybody. How are you? Wow, what a day, huh? What an absolute day. If only there was some way to know what was going to happen today. <laughs> we'll get started here in just one second. Welcome on board. So welcome to our class today. My name is Michael. I am the co-founder of Back to the Future Trading .com. We've been in business nearly 20 years with thousands of customers all over the world, a near perfect trust pilot rating with people who trade currencies, forex, futures, equities, options, as well as crypto. And our entire claim to fame is this understanding of leveraging the power of data mining in relation to time. And so for the last, like I said, almost 20 years, we get together once a week and review what happened at the times that we gave people uh, two days ago to watch in popular markets like the E-mini S&P, uh, crude oil, the Dow, NASDAQ futures, gold, uh, euro, US dollar, as well as uh, I think we had Ethereum up there as well. How many of you were following along with those times this week? Quick show of hands. Anybody? Hey, Mary, good to see you. Let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. Our entire theory. Our entire theory is that markets are following a time-based pattern, that there are times over the course of the session of trading, whether it's the Euro, the uh, UK, or the Asian sessions. And at certain times of the day, we can postulate whether or not the market is likely to go higher or lower. Now, we accomplish that using something called data mining. With this program that I'm showing you, it's the flagship product of the company, the one that's been around for uh, quite a long time. It's this idea of looking across thousands and thousands of historical bars in the market that you're trading and asking the program to sort of piece together whether or not there are any times lately where let's say the e mini s p is going up or going down and then it sort of alerts us in the future to the possibility of that happening so that maybe when the banks do what they're about to do again we can get our contracts out in front and so i want to show you something real quick before we look at the um the actual um forecasts that I gave you for today. And you'll see on our Facebook page that earlier I made a post. I made a post. Uh, and I, I mentioned to you guys that I had uh, a long signal from yesterday. And for those of you that follow along on our Facebook page at Back to the Future Trading, you saw that we were discussing an entry yesterday. We took it on the five minute chart. We held it all the way to the close at four o'clock. And then we had a predictive sell signal at four o'clock Eastern, and then another buy signal from four o'clock. And you can see here that as of the time of this post, which was eight hours ago, eight hours ago, Dave, around eight o'clock this morning, uh, there was a blue line on the screen. Can everybody see what time that says? I'll zoom in just so you can uh, get a better sense of what we were doing. And so as of 8 o'clock this morning, we were looking for selling from that 10 o'clock candle forwards. And so the element of prediction 
requires sort of demands a transparency on par with nothing else on par with no other platform or guru or approach because everything else that you're watching is lagging when a guru tells you get long get short it's happening right now in the present by the time you hear it it's lagging when you're looking at any kind of indication that's telling you hey this just happened or has been happening it's lagging but when you have a big fat signal sitting here in the future and it's saying hey this is what's potentially coming next that's leading and there's a big difference there and so i'm very clear about that and i was saying in my comments um i'm watching for a top here but following the trend until it's different and then I showed where my trail stop was at the time. And so based on that, Dave, you can see right here, <clears throat> 10 o'clock rolls around. And from the open of that candle, I want you to see the RR here, right? From the open of the candle, the market went up $8, eight and a half dollars, and then fell a total of 34. So, we can look into the future. This is, of course, a 60 minute time frame, but we can look into the future and have some sense of what's coming up. Some sense of what's coming up. So, when we're looking, forgive me here, I'll open up a new chart. When we're looking at the forecasts that people use to trial us and see whether or not we're for real. Let's talk about what's involved with that. Let me see if I can find it. I feel like we just had it. I was doing all these nice things with pictures and now you can sort of see that I'm human after all. And we can go back. I have too many tabs open today. Maybe this is it. Yes. So if you take part in the webinar, uh, or rather in the video demonstration, when you sign into our website for the very first time, you get access to four weeks of these signals. And basically, you'll see all of the times here for Wednesday and Thursday in the Eastern Daylight Savings time zone. For the e-mini S&P, oil, gold, the DAX, the euro currency, the Dow, the NASDAQ, euro dollar, pound dollar, and Ethereum. So we're putting it out there, so to speak. Well, what was available, you'll see here that this chart was uploaded three days ago. So my post this morning, everyone, was indelibly published to the internet. At eight o'clock this morning, I'm long until the nine o'clock, 10 o'clock candle. And then we took the short and now we're reversed in that position. These are arguably harder to justify because it's on a much smaller time frame. See, I could have been 50% right, 50% wrong. Would you agree? I could have been 50 50 on that 60 minute time frame. And so when I give you an entire session's worth of outputs from the program for a five minute chart, the stakes are arguably higher, are they not? There's a lot more data on the table, there's a lot more uh, inspection possible. So what exactly are we watching for? This is the only program in the world of its kind that is telling us in the future when to watch for a move. Now, why do we care? Why do we care? What is the signal telling us, Michael? Is it some black box thing? No, it's a pattern. It's a pattern in time. And so 
if we're watching, the program is essentially telling us, look, I've gone back over thousands of bars of historical data in the S&P, in the Dow, in Bitcoin, in Tesla, in NVIDIA. And when the program went back, it noticed there's a pattern over the last several thousand bars of repeating consistent movement. And so all of these times that have been known since three days ago are targets of an algorithm trained to find patterns, repetitive, abnormal, anomalous patterns where for whatever reason, whoever's doing it, the S&P on a five minute chart is putting in highs and going higher at 2.20, 4 o'clock, 9.15, 10.55, 1.05, and 2.35. The only reason these signals are here is because the algo spots the pattern. It's not a black box algorithm. It's not a funny guru feeling. There is no spidey sense involved, right? This is simply a target. Something is happening over and over and over again. And the program brings it to our attention and says, hey, when that happens again, maybe the risk will be low enough for you to participate. There is potentially a statistical edge to exploit. And it's leading. This is 100% leading not lagging. It is predictive, not reactive. So conversely, the program says, hey, and by the way, all of these times have a historical pattern associated with them as well. 835, 1015, 1220, 135, and 355 all have a pattern of what? Going lower. Now, a lot of people get caught up in the why of it. I do sound better this week. Thank you for all your well wishes, by the way. My cough is much better than it's been. This is the ultimate Rubicon, the ultimate test, the ultimate crucible. No other vendor does this because it's hard. They want you dependent on them. They want you dependent on their never ending courses. They want you in their discords every day where there's a new book, a new pamphlet, a new weekend course with finger sandwiches. Let's take a look at what happened. <clears throat> okay. So again, I just want you to see how these times tie in to what we see. Remember, these were printed three days ago to about 100,000 people watching us. And I'm just gonna draw some lines real quick. There's the three o'clock signal. Here's the three o'clock signal. There's the 4 a.m. signal. Here's the 4 a.m. signal. 440, 440, 510, 510, and then the US session, 915, 1015, 915, 1015, 135, 105, 135, 105. All these times match what was published two days ago. So what are the biggest problems traders run into? What are most people doing that they can't seem to wrap their heads around? And how can this potentially help us? Okay, there are several things that most traders are doing that basically decimate their account. Number one, they overtrade. Number two, they move their stops. And number three, they get out too early. This is that uh, thing that joins all of us together as blood brothers and blood sisters. We all do this. If you ever placed an order with a contract, a PIP, 
uh, spread, a uh, call, or a put, you have done one of these three things. So when we come and look at this chart now, how might the program alleviate this? Well, when it comes to stops, we're basically placing one an ATR distance away from the signal candle. So at 235, for example, I've told the program, hey, measure how far a five minute bar moves on average. What is the average true range of a five minute bar? Well, it's five ticks, 15 ticks, 50 ticks, whatever it is. Can you move my stop one of those distances away plus 50%? So I want to be just outside the noise of the market moving. And you can see here at 645, the average true range plus 50% is smaller than it is at 235. So as the volatility changes over the course of a session, we're looking at how big a bar is and then putting our stop a little bit away from that. So if a five minute bar is four points, our stop will be six points away. Not too bad. So to alleviate moving our stops, here's what we're able to do predictively. At 645, the trade either happens now or it doesn't. Why would you move your stop? I liken this to the example of waiting at a bus stop. If the bus schedule tells us that the bus is going to be there at 645 and you arrive, let's say at 640 and start looking for the bus, how long are you gonna stand at that bus stop before you say enough is enough? Are you gonna wait a half an hour? Are you gonna be there an hour after the schedule says it's gonna be there? Or after about 15, 20 minutes, are you gonna call it quits and call an Uber? So by knowing the times in advance, we ameliorate or sort of rectify this paradox of moving our stop, giving it more room. Well, the bus isn't here yet. I'll wait a couple more hours because I don't want to, I don't want the bus driver to show up two hours later and nobody's waiting. Nobody says that. <clears throat> or if you order your food at a restaurant, and it normally takes 15, 20 minutes on the worst night for your food to come. You have an expectation of when your chicken Florentine will arrive. You don't sit there two hours waiting for the chicken Florentine and you're looking at the waiter in the corner and he's watching his Sudoku puzzle. You leave. After 15 minutes, I'm hungry. The food isn't coming. So by knowing the times in advance, we spearhead, we just drive square into this age old problem of why would I move my stop? The trade either works now or it doesn't, okay? So that's the first thing. When we get to these decision points, we're watching what the market volatility is, we're in tune with that volatility, and we're making decisions about our risk accordingly. How much time does the trade have to work? What direction is the market moving? How big are my stops and targets, okay? Second issue is moving my target. Why do people move their target and get out too early? Because they have no idea when the signal is supposed to terminate. They think it's random. There's this wonderful movie that we all watched. You watched it. Forrest Gump Feather. And there's this idea at the end of the movie when he's looking at the feather and it's flying around. Is the market random? Are we all just flying through the air like a feather or is there some plan to life? And most of us trade like it's the first, it's the prior, it's the former. There's no way to know how long this move is going to last. I better get out while the getting is good, right? So this program is saying, hey, if you buy it 220, the window should end at 3 a.m. 
And you know that before you place the trade. If I buy at 4 a.m., the window ends at 440. If I buy at 510, it ends at 550. If I buy at 645, it ends at 835. That hit my stop. If I sell at 1015, the window ends by 1055. If I buy at 1055, say it crosses the moving average here, I should be out by 1220. If I buy at 105, I should be out by 135. If I sell at 135, I should be out by 235. If I buy at 235, I sure as Shinola better be done by 355. So straight out the gate, when we do the harder thing, when we believe in a market that is not random, but perhaps manipulated, right out the gate, that belief system allows us to combat head on directly the two big things that traders do consistently wrong. They get out too early and they leave losers on too long. No other method can approach the remedies that this offers. In fact, as a result of this, most people are sort of locked into this fight or flight response. Right? The minute you get into a trade, what happens to you? All of the things. Your psychology is looking for ways to trip you up and self sabotage. It is a documented, powerful evolutionary defense mechanism. Your brain says, This is painful. We should stop. He's not stopping. Make him move his stop. He'll stop after that. Make her get out early and then watch the market go $100 in your direction. That'll put her in a shame cycle. We're the only company that gives you this technique. Okay? And then in terms of overtrading, before you started today, these were the times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And if you're trading with the trend, probably five of those. So now we have to distill the potential for turning into a runaway freight train of scalping where you look down and go, how many trades did I take today? 40 trades. That's like $300 in commissions. Oh. I thought I was up $300. And then you look into the future and you see, oh, wow, I already have the times for tomorrow. I already have the times for tomorrow. So you can't overtrade. I mean, you can, you can always do the things, but it's a lot harder to because you're waiting for these moves. And then vice versa, every trade has a shelf life. You don't buy a container of milk and throw it out an hour after you get home. You look at the milk and it says best buy. And it's like a week from now. You drink the milk as long as it's good. Stay in the trade as long as the window is open. So now, if you're placing these trades, watch. I'm in at 220, I'm out at 3 a.m. plus six dollars. I'm in at 4 a.m., I'm out at 440 plus seven dollars. I'm in at 510, I'm out, thanks Carl, at 550 plus five ticks. I'm in at 645, I'm out at 835 plus five dollars. First stop out coming, in, out. Minus six. Now, here's a fun fact. The very first time your buy stop gets hit is a very powerful indication that the trend has reversed. It means the banks are no longer endorsing this up move. It's a time that they were looking for markets to what? Go up. It's a time that, for whatever reason, over thousands of historical bars, the market usually goes up at 9.15.
and then it didn't. There was nobody buying there. And the stop gets hit. 1015 comes, the volatility is as high as I've ever seen it. The stop is really far away. But if you sold it with trend and exited at the next signal at 1055, you made five and a half dollars. The next signal with trend comes when the 1055 candle crosses over the moving average. We call this a crossover trade. It's very infantile in how we've named it. But right here, that candle at 1125 closes over the moving average. Our stop goes two ticks under that candle. Now it's a signal with trend. The crossover candle closes over the 120 EMA we told you on Tuesday we'd be using. And we exit at 12.20 with another $4. Above the trend line, above the trend line, above the trend line. Next signal, 105, ding! 135, <laughs> we give the $4 back. 135, above, 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 above. Oh my! This one closed below. That candle closes under the 120 period moving average. It is now a crossover trade. We'll call it that so you remember. <clears throat> it's now a signal with trend. In out by when? 235 plus 8.75. 355 comes if you're a glutton for punishment. 355, the market closes at 415. You made a whole five ticks. And you're a weirdo for trading that late into the day, but the signal is there. So now, now we're sort of left with a really un comfortable conclusion how how did we go from this which was published three days ago with a set of rules to trade it i told you what the moving average would be i told you what the stop would be I gave you a video to follow to learn what the signals of trend, what the trend were. And then two days later, when we followed those times, we're up 7, 14, 15, 20, 25, 29, 34, 35, 31, minus 6 is $25 across the three sessions. These, of course, are not real trades. This is simulated, right? Hypothetical. But 25 times 50 is over $1,000 in one day. I'm tired when people tell me our software is too expensive. I'm angry because of the marketing machines of the last 20 years that lead people to believe for just $15 a month they can be millionaires. Can you do me a favor if you don't own our software and you've ever bought a program that had a free trial or a $15 a month thing, can you reach over and hit yourself in the face with something heavy? I'm going to save you another $15. Call that the $15 heavy thing and hit yourself in the face with it when you go to buy a program with a free trial or a very low subscription. It's a marketing machine. They saw you a mile away. Cut it out. $1,000 across three sessions with just one market. Let's take a look at another market that we gave the times out for, oil futures. I don't know if you know this. I don't know if you know this, but there's some crazy people over in the Middle East right now. I'm not going to go through the times with you. 
but I want you to see we've got a lot of ground to cover that I gave the crude times for today on a one and three minute chart out in advance. Here they are. I can't take them back. Freeze frame it on the YouTube video if you're watching it and then compare it to what took place here. Hey, what's happening near the blue dots? It's going down. Look at the one signal at one o'clock today. Since three days ago, we warned you. The program said, hey, there's a selling window from 1 p.m. until when? 1.10. Holy crap. <laughs> Holy crap. Go short at 1 o'clock. Get out by 1.10. 27 ticks. Go long at 1.10. Get out at 1.14. Another 10 ticks. Go short at 114, get out at 128, another 18 ticks. Go long at 128, get out at 132, another 10 ticks. Go short at 132, get out at the close of 137, nine ticks. Go short here and long there, minus two ticks. Go long at 145 and uh, 208, that's a 41 tick move. What are we talking about? Tell me more about your fantastical trading system. Tell me more about your zero lag moving what you call it thingy majig. Tell me more about your guru with his Russian English accent and how debonair he is and how many hours he's had on the trading floor in New York. There was a plan. There was a plan. Here's the three minute chart. You want to throw up in your mouth? Here's the three minute chart on oil. Tell me more about how expensive our program is. Three days ago, of the hundreds of people who were taking a trial, three of them took the time to watch and see what would happen. And three days later, here's what happened in oil. I get a little excited, but guys, what happened at 851? What happened at 927? What happened at 1018? What happened at 1054? Here's the inventory report down from 11 o'clock until 1130. What happened at 1130 until 1206? And so on, and so on, and so on. You know what the real tragedy is? The times are available for tomorrow right now. There they are. All of them, they're here. They never change. The plan is carved in stone. Ready? This will make you really sick. We have the times right now for Monday, or actually Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of next week. We have the up down times now. Here's the sick part. They don't change, disappear, reappear, ever. Carl wrote a note. Carl, I'm going to share what you just wrote here. Carl is not associated with our company, he's not a paid endorser. Time Warp works. I've been using for four months and I have a 93% win rate this month, average of 10 trades per day, 115 trades this month with six losses. I use other charts and indicators for confirmation, but I don't enter a trade until I see what Time Warp is telling me. This is not a guarantee of you winning, but if you use it correctly, it should help. Thank you, Carl. Carl, you ever leave me a review? Do me a favor while you're still feeling frisky. Can you go here and tell the world that? <clears throat> I just posted a link to you. Helps us out a lot when you do that. Okay, any questions about this so far? It 
it works on other markets. This is the NASDAQ one minute chart for today. Thank you very much, Carl. I appreciate it. The NASDAQ one minute chart, here we go. Can you take shorts at the blue dots under the moving average? Can you take low risk longs below the moving average with a stop just under the signal candle? Look how often they do it. This is in the Asian session of the NASDAQ last night. If you're in, if you get home from work and your wife says, hey, we're gonna have tuna casserole tonight. We're gonna watch Netflix later. All right. Or you wake up a little early while everybody's asleep and you wanna try to trade the NQ for a little bit. Oh my gosh, 201, 219, 239, 318, 346, 417. Say, Michael, I prefer to trade during live sessions. Okay, here's the NQ yesterday. Yesterday, short at 926, there's the open, out by 936 plus $1,400, in at $942, out at $949, $44, another $800. Uh, Ramakaran, I have an answer to your question. You just got to let me go get it, stand by. It is the page you want, sir, is right here. So any questions about that? It works on multiple time frames too. You can go on a five minute chart for the NQ if you want and see the times on a five minute. The accuracy is the same across all time frames, Judy. All time frames. All you have to do is tell it what time frame you're trading. Here's a 15 minute chart. Here's a 60 minute chart in the NQ. And now we can see those times coming up to the right hand side, all the way up to and including a daily chart. Big moves. When's the next sell signal? Tuesday, October 29th. So can we use this on different instruments like Microsoft or Tesla? Sure. AMD. Sure. How about Netflix? Yep. And we can see the times coming up on the right hand side. Everything is predictive and based on time. Everything is predictive and based on time. Right? What about some of the commodities like gold? You see pretty quickly that what? There's a plan. How much further, how much longer is gold potentially going to rise? November 5th. And then November 20th. What if you had calls from February 7th until March 8th, April 1st until April 22nd, May 21st until June 27th? <clears throat> Put, or another call here, sorry, from here to here, ding. 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 You know when, what direction, and for how long. Well, Michael, you're taking away the element of surprise. I really like the adrenaline and the fear that rushes through my legs. Uh, I'm especially fond of the feeling of rejection when my wife sees how much money I've lost uh, every week. Uh, doing things with programs that were free trials and uh, had a hundred dollar a month subscription price. And uh, I really like when she tells me that I'm gambling. I kind of appreciate that. Uh, why I won't be able to do that with your program though. And that's a problem. Yeah, it's a problem. 
you might have to get used to winning again or making more. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Again, this is going to make you sick. Oil on a daily chart. Boy, it kind of looks like they had a plan, doesn't it? Is anything going on in the Middle East right now? Let's type Israel, Iran, and see if there's anything going on in the Middle East. Oh, they killed the leader of Hamas. That's fun. U.S. stealth bombers hit Houthi underground weapons depot. Hey, where is all this stuff happening? Oh, that's right. The Middle East. But there was a sell signal on the 17th until the 5th. There was a buy signal on the 5th until the 26th. There was a sell signal from the 26th until the 3rd. And then a sell signal from the 5th until the 13th. I warned all of you about the 13th. And a lot of you went long and got in until the 3rd. If you shorted the 3rd, oil is going down again until the 25th of October. This is a plan. This is a pattern. And people pretend that it's not. They pretend that anything could happen at any time. Yeah, well, uh, I'm a big time trader, Michael. I like to trade options on SPY and QQQ and LMNOP. And uh, yeah, I really need to see how this is. Go oh, wow. Shoot. I was going to talk myself out of buying it here, but then you typed SPY on the screen, and all of a sudden it's working really well. How long is the signal on the 4th supposed to last? 29th. Well, you know, I'm a big-time investor, actually. I, I don't even look at daily charts anymore. I got swings, and I'm, you know, I'm looking at week. Oh, crap. There's your weekly chart. Do the same thing for any other markets. Look at oil on a weekly chart. Look at gold on a weekly chart. That's actually a stock. I loaded the wrong thing. Here's gold on a weekly chart. You know how much gold Costco sold? to people, those $1,000, those one ounce bars that they were selling. Wouldn't you like to know when to buy your Costco gold bar? You could have bought it on the 30th, on the 30th, on the 27th, on the 9th, or on the 20th. Walked right into the gold shop, cash out profits, go back and get another one. I've sent all of these charts to people in the industry that I've seen on different podcasts and shows that I've been on. And I've gone back and said, hey, a month later, all these signals worked. Are you interested? Crickets. Nobody cares. You know, that's the most fascinating part of all this. I've learned more about human nature in the last 20 years than I have about markets. Arguably the same thing, but different. And I can sit there with someone who trades any market for two hours and say, well, let's watch it live together. And then I'll put the market they're trading on the screen and they'll see all the times coming in the future. And we get to everyone and it does almost exactly what we were expecting. 60, 70% plus of the time. What percentage of the time do you think people are basically falling over themselves to get to their credit cards and buy this? Take a guess. No. No. Yeah. Fewer than 10%. In a live demo where I say, listen, no guru input whatsoever. Here are the times and the directions. Here are the stops. We know how long the trades are going to go. There are X number of trades in the two hours we're together. And we finish up $500, $1,500. Almost the cost of the entire program in two hours. 
sounds great. I'm going to do it. Let me talk to my wife. I got to ask the dog. I'm going to throw some chicken bones on the floor in the kitchen. And then they disappear. I don't think people want to make money. I think there are people here who don't want to make money. <clears throat> I think there are people who are actually addicted to losing. And I didn't expect to learn that when I started out. Here's Bitcoin on a weekly chart. Benjamin, I'm not doing your crazy 36 Renko chart. That's like coming up to Jesus after he turned the water into wine and asking him if he can make it into a grape slushy. You know, I'm not a big fan of Merlot. Can you make it into a Cabernet? Cut it out, Ben. You're being silly. Bitcoin on a weekly chart. These are charts that I show every week. Asking's free. I applaud the effort. But you know better. Bitcoin on a daily chart. These signals were always the signals. They don't repaint, reappear, uh, disappear. The signal was on October 1st. Bitcoin rising from October 1st until when? October 24th. And you can go lower and lower on the time frame from a daily to a 60, from a 60 to a five, however you trade, it does not matter. These were the signals for Bitcoin today on a five minute chart. I gave you these times three days ago for the most unpredictable random market in the world that was ethereum actually let's put ethereum up there so i'm not so i'm not putting my foot in my mouth that's ethereum on a five minute chart all of the times that you see here on a cryptocurrency are times that i published three days ago for people taking the trial. Here, again, look at it, take a screenshot, pause it. I'll even blow it up for you following at home. And now compare it to what happened today, three days later. I only ever use the same settings in the webinar, James, a 714 swing strength eight. Every week for 20 years, I sit here and I do this. I let two days pass. I come back. There was a trading plan in place before this. The signals were in place before this. And it's almost always the same. Plus $1,000, plus $800, plus $1,500. And about 5% of people who see it actually move forward and about 95 percent of people continue to suck continue to inflict pain upon themselves continue to choose loss after loss after loss your program is too expensive hmm okay there's a guy that I watch on YouTube. Uh, he's also on TikTok. Pretty famous if you've ever uh, watched any of the shorts. There's a guy. He has a bunch of videos. And if you look for him, it's called That Ain't Right. He literally goes and does home inspections. New home inspections. And he'll go back before the contractor has permission to leave and get paid by the banks. And he finds about 150 things that they did wrong. Exposed wood with no waterproofing. He'll go in with a meter that measures heat and temperature after it rains. And he'll show the owners of the home 
that there's a massive leak in the roof and he'll show huge cool spots where the concrete and the uh the concrete and the sheetrock have absorbed all the rain from the day before tens of thousands of dollars this foundation is already cracking new construction and the contractor saying hey i'm ready for my bank payment Nobody gets a new home inspection because it's a new home. And they say, hey, I'm not going to pay this guy. It's a brand new home. What do I need an inspection for? That's what this program is. It's insurance against the banks. It's insurance against manipulation. It's insurance against your own psychology, your own self-sabotaging tendencies. It's insurance against your psyche, your history, patterns that are burned into your cerebral cortex where you just lose and lose and lose and do the opposite of what actually happens. It's insurance. And 95% of people get behind the wheel of the car and just drive and say, well, I, I never hit anybody. It'll be fine. Trading futures actually has the word future in it. And 95% of people who trade future futures markets have no future indicator. Meanwhile, customer after customer after customer qualification and getting payouts from companies like Apex and Top Step Trader. The owner of Apex is actually a customer of ours, Daryl Martin, longtime user of our earliest program, Flux. Why do these people use this program? Because trading is about what's likely to happen next, not what's already happened in the past. Any questions about this or any markets you want me to look at while we're here together? We've kind of come up on our one hour wall and I want to respect your time. Anybody? Of course, of course, the market is falling. Of course, the market is dropping. There is a plan. There was always a plan. There's a plan for tomorrow. There's a plan for Monday. There are times for Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. You're sitting here today and you're wondering, well, why should I do that? Because everyone that took the time, nearly everyone that took the time and sat exactly where you're sitting, came back and wrote a review like Carl. Completely different than anything you've seen. Excellent software. Stop lurking, looking and settling for indicators that don't work, that are lagging. Enjoy the ride. This is an amazing system, inspiring training, the best trading system you will come across. We have a 4.7 out of 5 trust pilot rating. More and more and more people leaving notes for you to review. Yeah, we can look at the daily chart for the ES. So. If we come here, we'll go to the daily. I'm gonna change the settings, Chris, when we get to that point. We'll hide this up. When we look at the E-mini S&P, I change the settings. It's one of the rare times that I do. We look at a one, two, three, five. We just find it works better. So Chris, on the daily chart for the E-mini S&P using WARP, we are down until October 18th. Down until October 18th. Then if we take a look at the NASDAQ, with the same settings, we were down from the 14th until the 18th. And I have a suspicion, Chris, that when we get to the 18th, it's gonna hit its stop and keep going down. 
That's my belief. If you look at the move, Chris, over here from the 9th until the 26th, this was a move that the banks were waiting for. They put in a brand new high. You see the stop run? That stop run is massive liquidity. Yes, James. That move from the low to the high was $1,882. Chris, the next move from the 7th when buying was supposed to occur, another stop run was less than half of that. So stop run here. right at the sell signal. And then the second stop run is here. This is, these are banks getting out of the positions. These are banks leaving the halls. They're getting out and they're triggering these new record highs, creating liquidity events, and then running for the hills. The fact that it's getting smaller and smaller on the push up and that we're not seeing equal length movements leads me to believe that the next signal is very likely to fail and drop down below its stop. <clears throat> the next push down, in fact, is probably the big push October 24th if I had to guess. Anything else? Yeah, man. When you know the times and you start looking in that direction and you start paying attention to them, you see the world through a different lens. But it doesn't have to be the experience that you've had. It can be a better one. It can be a better experience. I want you to be part of our team and our family. I want you to feel supported. I want you to feel like you have a place you can come and talk to these people. In fact, we have a Skype group. We have a group of customers right now, 324 of them who are in here sharing their experiences, telling people where they got in and where they got out and why sharing their settings and their results at the end of the day. This is today's Skype group. You can ask any of these people. The program that you want on our website is called Tachyon Warp. It's the flagship product. It's the one that everybody uses. You're going to go to backtothefuturetrading.com and everything you need and want is coming. When you get to backtothefuturetrading.com and you click on product store, there's going to be a link to a program called Warp. There's a program called Warp and when you go to purchase it, there's a promo code. Here's a couple things you need to know as we ratchet, up, ratchet it up and finish up. The promo code takes $500 off and it is W-A-R-P-O-F-F. W-A-R-P-O-F-F. -F. I see it, Raja. Okay. These are lifetime licenses. Okay. Lifetime updates on Warp. Comes with a free video training archive, hours of classes helping you get familiar with what everything is and how it does. It comes with membership in our Skype group. Where you can interact with people who've had the program for a day and for a decade. Make friends with people who are trading the same markets you're trading with the programs that they've been using for a long time. It's a great community. If you're not in there, Make sure to email Rachel or I for the link to be part of that group, okay?
The program has a 4.7 out of 5.0 trust pilot rating. Those are actual people, actual customers with actual credit card receipts. Okay, we've been in business for nearly 20 years. And we're not going anywhere. Any questions as we wrap up here? I'm going to turn you loose and just sort of challenge you, right? Why are you doing it the way you're doing it? Why do you believe what you believe about the markets? Which seems easier to you? Waiting, walking behind the elephant or standing up front, looking it in the eye and knowing when it's about to do what it's about to do? Having a schedule in advance, up, down, five minutes, 50 minutes. I'll leave it to you to decide. I appreciate all of you. Thanks for your time here today. I look forward to working with you as a new customer, being part of our Skype group, part of our training. When you sign up, you'll see there's an option to meet uh, with us Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We have a live training room. Uh, if you want to participate in that, I have a $200 a day goal per contract. Uh, the room costs $200 a month. We hit our goal, I think, in the first 10 minutes today. So consider if you want to watch us, the owners, the founders, the developers using the program in real time for a month or two, we'd be happy to have you there. May the wind be at your back. May the sun shine upon your face. May the valley rise up to meet you and the mountains lay low before you. I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a great weekend.